This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Only two weeks left in the 2023 regular season, but they are going to be big ones. And it begins this week. Week 17 has got a lot of really fun games on tap, and we got some big matchups in the NFC South and the NFC North. We're going to break down those key matchups, outline where Dr. Ed Fang is seeing value based on his numbers, and get you ready for what should be a fun Week 17 in the NFL. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of Digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Thursday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at thepowerrank. Ed, week 17 is coming in and is going to be a glorious one. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Looking uh, forward to so many of these games, Detroit at uh, at Dallas. Uh, we got Miami and Baltimore, so it's going to be an awesome, awesome weekend. It really is. And uh, like you said, on yesterday's show, we were talking about the college football playoff semifinals. We got good football Saturday through Monday with key important games across the board. If you want to find that preview of the college football playoff semifinals, check out the Covering the Spread podcast. And you can also find that show over on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV. TV Plus. Also, if you want a Thursday night football preview, Tom Vecchio has you covered primetime. Tom here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed, breaking down his favorite props for Jets versus Browns. Also, bonus episode, Tom will be with you tomorrow, Friday morning, breaking down his thoughts on the Vikings and the Packers. That'll be up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on FanDuel TV Plus later on score early this nfl season with fanduel america's number one sports book right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins if you've been thinking about joining fanduel there is no better time to get in on the action the app is so easy to use there is a wide range of betting options including spreads player props totals and more so visit fanduel and kick off the nfl season fanduel official partner of the nfl must be 21 plus and present in select states FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Ed, we're going to dig in and talk about those games in just one second. But first, I did want to talk about more of a, a broad topic here, because on Monday night, we saw the Ravens obliterate the 49ers, and they're a clear contender. The Niners, I would still say, very good. Those two teams are the top two teams. And we have this Ravens-Dolphins match coming up on Sunday. So I kind of want to talk about that in a different way versus talking about the actual game, but talking about who that third-ranked team is in the NFL is. I think it's got to be 49ers up there, Ravens up there as the top two teams. And then the Dolphins are at least in consideration for number three. I wouldn't put them there personally, but I wanted to ask you, based on what your numbers say, who do you have as that third ranked team in the NFL right now? Right. I was surprised by the answer to this. When you just look at the data based on this year, Kansas City's third. Okay. Oh. So they've had, their, they're, they've had their troubles recently. Uh, obviously there's really no excuse for losing to a Raiders team. Although I don't know what, I don't know what Pierce is doing with that defense, but it doesn't really seem yeah. like it's the same unit that it was at the beginning of the year. Now let's break this down. When you look at what I started the power rank as my team rankings, margin of victory adjusted for strength of schedule, Kansas City's not looking great. Uh, they are, uh, let's see. They are, uh, they are, 
Okay. Well, I mean, they're not terrible. They're they're fifth in the NFL, but they're three points better than NFL average. So that's that's not particularly good. Uh, if you only use this margin of victory type numbers, uh, they're seven points worse than Baltimore. Probably a little bit too too much. Although maybe not with the way the markets tend to react <laughs> to uh, the most recent performance. But when you look at some of the underlying passing metrics, they they do a lot better. So for passing success rate, you just for both offense and defense, um, you know, they're second behind only Baltimore in my numbers right now. There's still, um, you know, I, it obviously doesn't look good. The turnovers have been a problem, obviously, and this happens. I mean, this was a problem for them two years ago, too, if I'm not mistaken, right? And then everything was very good last year. Um, the turnovers have been an issue, but, I mean, there's still a lot of good underlying fundamentals there. Um We've talked all year about how the defense has been really good. It continues to be good. Las Vegas didn't do anything. They had those two defensive touchdowns. So a little bit surprising. You know, I got Kansas City as the, the third best team ahead of uh, Miami and Buffalo. So I'm curious, what does that do for you as far as futures? Right now, if we're looking at the AFC Conference uh, odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook, the Ravens obviously do lead the way. They are plus 185 right now. The Dolphins are plus 330. Then you get to the Chiefs at four to one. Uh, the Bills are after them at five to one, but of course their path here is pretty tough uh, because likely going to be a wild card team. There's still a path then to win the AFC East, uh, and it's not a crazy path by any means. Not a crazy path by any. No, I, yeah. I've got I've got that ticket. So like you know, I'm hoping that does happen. Uh, right. But like when you look at that, do you think this is a good buy low spot in the Chiefs, or is the market still in this in this realm properly valuing them? Well, I haven't run my numbers through the undebated NFL simulator, but I would guess that, I don't know, four to one sounds decent. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm certainly going to have them rated ahead of Miami and Buffalo because their preseason prior is, is still pretty, pretty good as well. So, yeah, so definitely potentially some value there. Yeah. So when I look at my numbers, I actually have Buffalo next um, as being the next best team. And that's not thinking about, conference odds because obviously it's a very different dynamic We're talking about them going on the road and stuff like that but uh buffalo actually the third ranked team overall for me behind uh the niners and the ravens they are in the same tier as dallas and a bit above miami so like it's not a huge separation but i still think that we want to be in on buffalo now personally i've found this to be I do have that AFC East uh, ticket that I talked about before, but I think with where things stand right now, I'm more in interested in buying them like individual games. The The market for them this week has moved enough. They're at 13 and a half against the Patriots. I think that's appropriate. Uh, it was a bit light earlier, but I think it's now proper. I, I, I feel like it's a situation where I want to keep buying them in individual games versus the futures market, though. So, Ed, when you look at the bills, where do they come in relative to the Chiefs, as you were talking about before? Yeah, I mean they're they're a top five team. Um, yeah, let's see. I actually I just pulled them up. So in my ratings, they are fourth right now. So yeah, I mean they're definitely a top five team. We talked about how turnovers have been a problem for them as well. And you know, I mean when you when you have a bad stretch of turnovers, it's it's not, uh, you know, it's not likely to continue. Um, right. Especially for, uh, you know, I think Josh Allen is pretty good at not putting the ball in dangerous positions in, in terms of turnovers. Uh, definitely had the bad side of luck this season. So, yeah, I mean, I, I like Buffalo as well. Yeah, especially this year. I mean, Allen, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and they have a path to winning the division, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Baltimore yeah. beats Miami, and then they beat Miami next week. Correct. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> easy peasy. I hope so, at least, <laughs> personally. Uh, looking forward. I mean, easy peasy as far as, uh, I mean, the Ravens and the Bills will be favored in both games, right? Actually, it's probably in Miami. It's right? in Miami, so, so I think... 50-50 game. Yeah. I well, I think Waddle will probably miss that game too, if I had to guess. Um, mm -hmm. so it, right. it'll be interesting to see what the uh what the line will be for that game. I want to see if FanDuel has a look ahead up uh for that one. They do. Uh they have the Dolphins minus one and a half right now. So slight edge towards Miami, but not a big one by any means. Right. I think I got a yeah, I'm gonna have let's see. I, I'm gonna have Buffalo favored. I might not have them fa I might be pretty in line with market on that one personally, but because I have 1.8 for home field, Buffalo a bit better than Miami. I think it actually will be pretty well with downgrade for Waddle might be in there a bit. So yeah, it'll be pretty tight, but 
I'm sure we'll talk about that game next week. Looking forward to watching that game as well. But let's dive into week 17 in these games here first. Let's begin things with the Saturday night game between the Lions and the Cowboys right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The total is 52 and a half, and this spread has tightened. It was six and a half or six points. It's now four and a half points. The Cowboys being favored here, obviously. And the Cowboys have seemed like a totally different team and when they've been at home this year versus on the road, but they're now facing pretty tough opponent as they move back home. So how do you see this game playing out? Lions versus Cowboys. Right. I mean, my numbers have uh, Dallas by 3.7 points. I have Dallas as a slightly better team. You put a little bit of home field advantage. I'm using 2.2 points there. Um, you know, you get a spread that's a little, that's greater than three, but certainly not the six that FanDuel had this morning. Um, I think the, uh, Detroit has a better pass offense by my numbers slightly. Dallas is still pretty good on that side of the ball. Detroit's defense is, has not been good, and that's why overall I would rate uh, the Lions a little bit worse than Dallas. But overall, um, I was definitely finding value in, um, in in Detroit plus six this morning. Another thing I think goes a little bit under the radar, at least, well, maybe not if you read some of my stuff, but Jared Goff is one of the best at not throwing interceptions. He has a you know a 9.4 percent bad ball rate compared to the NFL average of 11.7. I mean that's just excellent, and he's been one of the best. Um, that means he's going to he's going to obviously interceptions are pretty random, but he's going to tend to not throw interceptions. Dak on the other hand has been worse than NFL average. He's been at 12.1 percent. So this is actually not something that's in my numbers, but this is a pretty big profile game, and and it really should be in my numbers. Um, the probability of, of, and actually their pass attempts are about the same. There's a lot. I think there's like 36 for both of them. Um, that's kind of a significant edge in terms of potential turnovers for Detroit here, which would push this prediction probably under three if I did that properly. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like Detroit plus six. Uh, that's what I sent out to my members this morning. Kind of surprised it moved so much in, in what, two hours, three hours since then. But, uh, I guess that's the way the market moves. Yeah, it was six as of this morning. And then I think it was, it moved to four and a half. I never saw a five or a five and a half at all at FanDuel, at least. Um, I right. had gone about an hour or so without checking and refreshed, and it was four and a half. I didn't see it pass through either, though. So it was a pretty significant move in a very short period of time. The total also did come down to 52 and a half. Talked about this game on Tuesday on my end. I like the under there at 53 and a half. I do still show value in the under 52 and a half. I've had a 50.2 personally. So still showing value on the under there. 53 is not a huge key number. So I would still be willing to take under at 52 and a half personally. And part of that was you talked about the passing offenses here, Ed, and talked about how Jared Goff doesn't put the ball in harm's way, things like that. But also I think they're probably going to be able to move the ball on the ground against the Cowboys here, which they've shown a desire to do when they can. And I think they'll be able to in this spot with how much the Cowboys have struggled against the rush here recently. That's part of why I like the unders. I think the, the, the Lions can move the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving, and kind of drain that out. So it sounds like we're both getting to a similar place, just kind of a different route to get there. You're, you're, you're liking the Lions side of things here because they don't put the ball in harm's way. I think the Lions be able to move the football on the ground. So I think that both lends itself to having interest in the Detroit side here. And even, you know, I know it's shortened from six, but four and a half is not a terrible number. I wouldn't take it personally. And I, I think that sounds like you'd be the same with your being at 3.7, but like, you, we understand why the market has gone this way. For sure. I definitely understand why the market has gone this way. Actually, I had a question for you. Yeah. Tyron Smith and Taylor Decker, the tackles for each team are both listed as questionable. I presume you think Smith is a bigger loss potentially than, than Decker. Yeah, Decker's missed some time already this year. And they've like the Lions have been outside of Frank Ragnow, that they've not been able to overcome their center. When he's been out, they've really struggled. Uh, but their tackles, uh, they've had a lot of guard injuries too. They're one of the better teams at like getting around offensive line injuries, I would say. I think the Dolphins are number one by a wide margin at that. But the Lions, outside of when Ragnow has been out, have been very good at that. Um, so I think that they, they'd be okay there. I think Decker, uh, Dan Campbell said on, Wednesday that Decker should be good to go as well. I think Tyron Smith will play too. Um, but like it's a back injury for an older player. Is he a hundred percent? 
and, and Zach Martin's healthier now too. So I think I think they'll both be able to go, but it doesn't hurt my under ticket if they can't. So um I, I would say that that Smith is the bigger loss because the Cowboys have definitely had pretty big fluctuations this year based on the, their offensive line. So yeah, I'd agree with that that question. All righty, let's take a look at our second game here of this weekend. It's a big one in the NFC South. It is between the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, Buccaneers are two and a half point favorites. Total in this game is 42 and a half. And Ed, the Bucs are a weird team where they have been dependent on moving the ball on third down the entire of the year. And that's unsustainable. I feel okay saying that. But they've now done it for 15 games. The sample keeps growing. So can they do it one more time and lock up the NFC South in this game against the Saints? I mean, I I say no, really. I mean, we haven't been high on on this Tampa. I haven't been high on this Tampa Bay uh, offense all. I, I this Tampa Bay team all year, and they've really been on a two game heater. Uh, when you look at what they've done the last two games against Green Bay and Jacksonville, I mean, we're talking about 60 percent passing success rate against Green Bay. We know that's not exactly a, a great unit. 54 percent passing success rate against Jacksonville, uh, a unit that seems to be on the skids lately. These are really outlier performances. Overall, I have Tampa Bay exactly at NFL average when you look at passing success rate, adjusted yards per pass attempt. Mike Evans has been great, but otherwise, you know, on both sides of the ball, this Tampa Bay team's kind of meh. When you look at New Orleans, uh, you know, the unit that really sticks out is this defense. Uh, you know, even without um, Marshawn Latimer for the last couple of weeks, you know, they rank fifth in my adjusted passing success rate. Uh, Paulson Adebo has, has been fantastic. That is going to be the best unit out on the field, no matter what uh, happens with Derek Carr and the offense there. You know, my numbers actually favor New Orleans in this game. I definitely think there's value in uh, taking them plus two and a half on a road in a very big game. Uh, right now, as you said, the plus two and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook is minus 110 for the Saints here. Digging more into the early down stuff for the Buccaneers. I think that's kind of the big sticking point with this team is the fact that they don't move the sticks early. Uh, their early down passing numbers, they're league average on early downs when they're throwing when they're throwing the ball. The problem is they run the ball at a heavier clip than most teams. Like their early down pass rate is lower than league average. And they have for the second consecutive year, one of the worst rushing offenses you could possibly concoct. And so like, if they were to decide we're just going to abandon the run entirely and lean in fully on this passing offense, I'd have a bit more faith in them. But they haven't done that, and they've got a defensive-minded head coach who in the past has been, I know he's not calling offensive plays, but he's had a skew towards being run-heavy. In these past two games against uh, the Packers and the Jaguars, the Jaguars game you can kind of excuse because they were up big early, but like in that Packers game, they had more early down runs than they did passes. So like the reason they've gone off is not because they suddenly decided to lean on Baker and lean on this passing game. It's just they've been hyper successful in the times they have. So if you told me they are going to be pass heavy starting this week, I'd be I'd be willing to like maybe consider them at minus two and a half. But why would they change it if it's being successful? And the problem is it's I think it's like a false sense of security. So I this says a Tampa Bay minus two point two. Uh, so I'm not on the New Orleans side like you are, but like. I don't think they can keep up what they're doing. It's just very frustrating to watch them continue to run the ball in early downs despite being terrible there. And like, I take a league average passing offense over a terrible rushing offense, but I don't think that's going to change. So I think that a lean toward the Saints here, or you know, liking the Saints at plus two and a half makes a ton of sense just because the Bucks, it's like they can't, they can't keep getting away with this meme. <laughs> I just wish they would trust Baker a bit more and stop trying to run on early downs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know how much I trust Baker, but he's good enough to start in the NFL, and that's yeah, that that's pretty good. And I would trust Baker over the you know third worst rushing offense at least. Like I might not trust Baker over you know every NFL quarterback, but I trust him over early down runs in the back of a pretty bad interior offensive line. And they're in a good position right now, so we'll see how that goes. Exactly. 
I, I like I want to watch Baker in the playoffs. Uh, so like I hope that they win, but like they're a very frustrating team for sure. Let's right. finish things off with this Sunday night football game between the Packers and the Vikings right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total is 44 and a half, and the Vikings are favored by one and a half. And big news today was that Jared Hall will start for the Minnesota Vikings over Nick Mullins. And that's, you know, intriguing. It's a rookie guy, a fifth round pick at a BYU, stuff like that. And he's facing a Packers defense that has been awful this entire year. But yeah. they're now facing a fifth round rookie. We can spin it the other way. Who doesn't have TJ Hawkinson or Jordan Addison? So, who do you got coming out on this one, Ed? I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I assume that Nick Mullins is going to play, and I have Minnesota by about three. Mullins is pretty interesting. Like, if you take a look at <clears throat> my bad ball numbers, like, uh, you know, it's a small sample size, and I'm not sure I trust everything. Um, but you know, he's got a respectable 12.4% bad ball rate. The NFL average is 11.7. His pick rate is 7.4, which is awful compared to 2.4, I think, or 2.3, whatever whatever it has been. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think when you watch him play, I kind of believe the 7.4 sometimes. Right, right. Um, he has definitely put the ball in a lot of dangerous positions. But when, you know, he, he is actually close to Kirk Cousins. When you look at my adjusted passing success rate, he's better and yards for pass attempt. So he's doing some things right. Um, probably an upgrade over Josh Dobbs. Like what, you know, if he hadn't thrown all those picks last week, you know, he'd probably be starting right now. And now you're going with a rookie. I, I really have no idea how to evaluate that rookie. I certainly can't do it quantitatively. Right. Seems like, I don't know. I mean, it seems like with a rookie quarterback, that Green Bay should be favored here. Can't really quantify that. Like I said, um, you know, their, their, their offense has been about league average, which I think is pretty good given the turnover uh, first year starter there. So um, I don't know. I have nothing. To, I, I, I don't really know how to, how to really handicap this game, especially with, with the Jaron Hall situation. Yeah, it's definitely weird. A hall uh, was very old coming out of BYU. I think he was 25 when he came out. Uh, so Maybe that means he's more experienced, but it also means he was not good enough to go to the NFL until he was 25 years old. And that to me is the biggest downside here. So fifth round guy who wasn't good enough. Like, I mean, Hendon Hooker was also pretty old, but at least he was a third round pick as opposed to a fifth round pick. And he was also a guy who was good when he was young, whereas Hall didn't really have that to the same extent. So it's a lot of red flags here for the Vikings before you even get to the Hawkinson and Addison injury. So I do the Packers favor by 0.65 here. Personally, I took their uh, money line of plus plus one ten when We talked about that on Tuesday. This is before they announced that Mullins be benched in favor of Jaron Hall. I still would be okay with that. Now with the money line being at minus one Oh six. Now I don't think there's any value in the Packers side anymore. So I wouldn't bet it now if you had not gotten it previously. Right. Um, but I still think that the, movement there is proper the total is 44 and a half right now i have a 42.9 so i did show value when it's a 46 and a half it's come down enough where it's a slight value and you do get a win on 44 which is a key number but i think that the market has moved to a point where this game is a stay away from me now with where it is it sounds like you're kind of on the same page because hall is so much of an unknown and there's really no way to i guess quantitatively predict what to expect out of him for sure. I mean, he does have the ultimate cheat code in Justin Jefferson, True. Uh, a guy that you can just kind of chuck the ball up to uh, I don't know, six times did. on a single drive. <laughs> that happened at the end of the first half last week. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, how's that going to go? I mean, that that's a that's a nice asset. But you did mention that they'll be without Addison and Hawkinson, and, and that matters because you yeah. just triple team Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Well, especially if your starting cornerback, Jair Alexander, is suspended because he decided to send himself out there for the coin toss last week without direction and nearly ruined uh, the the coin toss as well. So right. it's a blessing uh, for the Packers that this is all happening uh, when they are reeling on defense and facing a team with a player as good as Justin Jefferson.
That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. As mentioned, though, a lot of other good stuff in the feed right now. Our college football playoff semifinal preview is posted, breaking down Michigan, Alabama, and Texas versus Washington. Uh, Got a lot of good recommendations from Ed in that one yesterday. And you can also find Primetime Tom for the Thursday night game right now. You can find it for the Sunday night game tomorrow morning, all right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Ed, what is going on for you over at the Power Rank? I had Kelly Ford of kfordratings.com uh, on the podcast. We talked about the semifinal games. We talked about his college football analytics. Really good conversation. Check that out on the Football Analytics Show wherever you get um, wherever you get your, your podcasts. And then, yeah, check out my free sports betting email newsletter. If you're looking for action on any given weekend, this is the free service for you. Uh, I do that in Five Nuggets Saturday. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. All right. And the uh, podcast, again, the Football Analytics Show, you can find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes. You can find me on threads at Jim.Sonnes. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Ed, happy new year to you. We'll talk to you once again next week. And happy new year to all of you listening out there as well. Have a happy, safe, and healthy weekend. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 